Well, hi, everyone. Well, the plot continues to thicken in Rhode Island relative to the I-195 bridge project, the emergency closure of the Washington Bridge that was closed by Rhode Island DOT back in mid-December of 2023. Now, the federal government has launched a fraud investigation into what's led up to this emergency closure. Now, I'm going to read from this letter sent by the Department of Justice last Friday on January 26, 2024. It was sent to the governor's office in Rhode Island. They received it at 10.30 in the morning on Friday and didn't release it till 6 p.m. Friday night. Gee, I wonder why that was. Uh, probably because there'd be nobody around to answer any questions. It says, this civil investigative demand is issued pursuant to the False Claims Act to determine whether there is or has been a violation of U.S. code. The investigation concerns the allegation that false claims for payment for services and or false statements in support of such payments have been submitted to the U.S. government. These payments relate to claims submitted involving the construction, inspection, and or repair of the Interstate 195 Washington Bridge connecting Providence and East Providence, Rhode Island. So they've been given till 9.30 a.m., February 26, 2024, to respond with these records. Now let's look at the specific records they're being asked to submit. All documents, including all reports, records, notes, correspondence, photographs, and videos related to or depicting any beam tie-downs or tension rods at the beam seats on Pier 6 and 7 of the Washington Bridge. This includes email and text message communications. Keep in mind that these failed anchor rods that were apparently only discovered in mid-December, if we take what Rhode Island DOT has said at face value, uh, these anchor rods were broken at Pier 7. All contractor invoices and progress payments, including all supporting documents for work performed on the beam seats, all documents, reports, or other records describing or showing any work performed on the beam seats, all documents related to any inspection of the Washington Bridge, including all draft and final reports, all notes, and all photographs. This includes all correspondence, including emails and text message communications related to any inspection of the Washington Bridge. And they mention all contractual requirements or specification related to the repair of these beam seats, uh, photographs that were taken by or sent to any employee of Rhode Island DOT, regardless of whether the photos were taken on a company issued or personal phone. This includes all metadata regarding any such photograph. All correspondence, including email and text messages related to the beam seats on Pier 6 and 7 of the Washington Bridge. And uh, this demand for records goes back to January 1, 2015. Keep in mind that the current Rhode Island DOT director, Peter Alviti, assumed that role in February of 2015. So this demand of records pretty well covers his entire tenure at Rhode Island DOT. So I've done a few videos about this emergency bridge closure. I mean, it's a fascinating story, and I really feel for the people who have to commute from East Providence to Providence and vice versa. It's just a nightmare traffic scenario, and it's going to go on for many, many months, if not years. Now that the federal investigators are involved, it's going to extend the time period before anything at all is done on this project, in, in my opinion. You know, Rhode Island DOT closed this bridge in mid-December and said they would implement repairs and get the westbound bridge lanes opened up again within a three-month time span, which I thought was exceedingly optimistic. And then recently, uh, Peter Alviti with Rhode Island DOT announced that, well, they may actually have to demo the bridge and reconstruct it entirely. Now, I think it's interesting that they're wanting to get at inspection reports. If you just take it at face value, what the federal investigators are looking to determine is whether there was falsified bridge inspection reports, whether reports uh, were documenting things that actually weren't observed during an inspection, something of that nature, or if there was uh, photos or narratives in these reports that didn't actually represent the condition of the bridge in the field. I have no idea, but this is not a good development for Rhode Island DOT and the people of Rhode Island. Even though Governor McKee's office says they welcome the federal investigation, I don't know why they would welcome it. I mean, unless they can scapegoat somebody. And, you know, this looks like utter, it looks like the potential that is for utter mismanagement to come to light here uh, relative to the governor's office and the Rhode Island DOT. 
if it is determined, and I don't know this is the case, whether there were repairs done or charged that weren't actually done, if there were inspections that weren't accurate. You know, uh, I practice primarily in the Midwest doing construction phase testing of bridge foundations. It's a very important job, and I take it seriously. And I've been involved with that type of work for about 22 years and with my own company for the last 15 years. And there's only been one time that uh, anybody requested that I do something fraudulent relative to my testing and observation. And I was utterly outraged. And uh, I immediately notified that individual and his company that we would no longer be doing work for them. And I also took other appropriate action to make sure that nothing shady was going to get swept underneath the rug. In essence, what this contractor asked me to do, and I was providing services for them, was outright fraud on a bridge project. They asked me to test B and say it was A because they knew there was problems with A and that supposedly the inspector was going to go along with that, which you know, was another dimension to this thing that, that alarmed me. So obviously, I'm, I'm no fool. I'm a professional engineer. I'm not going to even entertain that type of behavior uh, under any circumstances. So I guess my point is, in my experience, fraud exists on bridge projects, uh, but it's very limited and very rare based on what I've seen. Now, a number of you have commented on my previous videos on this Washington Bridge that in your opinion, corruption is rampant in the state of Rhode Island, and you wouldn't at all be surprised if there was some type of shady business going on that led to the sudden closure of this Washington Bridge. Now, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I'm not particularly uh, impressed with Director Alvidi's statements that he's made at press conferences, because when they had to close this bridge on an emergency basis, the first thing out of his mouth was, alleging that there must have been a heavily overloaded truck that crossed the bridge and caused this damage. But he offered no evidence to support that. And instead, they issued a photograph supposedly showing a before and after, you know, a current photo showing the broken anchor rod and a previous photo from July 2023 inspection that ostensibly showed the rod was intact. The problem is, from the angle of the photo, you cannot examine that portion of the rod that was later found to be broken. So it could have been intact, it could have been broken, but to say that photograph is a definitive uh, indicator that the rod was intact in July is simply not true. Now, one thing I'll point out is Rhode Island DOT has posted past bridge inspection reports for Washington Bridge on their website. And it, the ones I've looked at, uh, the inspections were done by private engineering consultants. You can see from this uh, report here from July of 2023, Jacobs uh, is indicated on the inspection report. You know, I mentioned that I think fraud is extremely rare, thankfully, on public bridge projects. There was uh, an episode going back over 15 years in the state of California for California Department of Transportation where they did their own in-house testing of bridge foundations, and it was discovered that at least one, if poss possibly two individuals, had falsified test reports for bridge foundations. In other words, they said they, they were presenting the results of tests that actually weren't performed. It, it turned out they were recycling tests from other bridge projects, which is utterly outrageous. And uh, Caltrans had their state auditor look into this situation. They fired a, a supervisor who apparently knew about it but didn't do anything, and then they offered the the main bad actor, early retirement without firing him. So uh, slap on the wrist if you ask me. Now, I'm not familiar with the local politics in Rhode Island or the state politics, but Governor McKee is in a very bad position uh, relative to his administration of the state agencies, and particularly the Department of Transportation. Very little likelihood that this ends well for him, in my opinion. The state has commissioned what they call an independent engineering review of the events that led up to the emergency closure of the Washington Bridge. That report supposedly is going to be issued sometime in February. In the meantime, the federal investigation will 
presumably commence by the end of February and would likely take probably six months. In the meantime, Governor McKee sent a staffer to be a liaison on the Washington Bridge disaster, if you will, and now they're requesting money from FEMA to get this bridge back open. And I can tell you, just from a common sense standpoint, if federal investigators are looking into the possibility of, of fraud and mismanagement relative to what's happened at the Washington Bridge for the last several years, I don't think there's any way they're going to get one dollar of federal funding until this whole set of questions has been resolved. And then the governor's office cited this Stafford Disaster Relief Act, which goes back to 1988, and it provides emergency funding for disasters. And I guess this is a disaster for commuters in Rhode Island, but it's not like a natural disaster, as you would typically expect for such funding. So I'll continue to follow this story. I hope that there is no outright fraud, but uh, just looking at other cases across the country, when shady activities have happened with contractors, they're typically disbarred for many, many years. You know, the uh, FIG engineers on that Florida University bridge collapse, uh, that engineer was suspended from participating in any federally funded projects for a period of 10 years, as well as FIG engineering themselves. You know, I have heard instances of contractors getting together and colluding on bids. These weren't people that I were, was involved with in any way. But uh, you get a situation where maybe there's limited bidders and they work out an arrangement where one bid's really high and the next contractor bids just below them and secures the work. And then they, they split the, the revenue or profits because they've worked together to get the project at a favorable uh, price. But, you know, you're looking at the timeline for this Rhode Island I-195 bridge, you know, perhaps six months for a federal investigation, perhaps engineering, independent engineering investigations can go on concurrently so that a recommendation can be made for design, repair, and or replacement. Then you have to secure funding. You know, if the federal government determines that there's fraud involved within Rhode Island DOT, and again, I don't know whether this is the case or not, I don't know, I've never heard of a state DOT being debarred from uh, participating in federally funded projects. So I don't know how there could be a mechanism for say Federal Highways Administration to directly administer projects in the state of Rhode Island if they can't trust the Rhode Island DOT. And, and the other obvious thing that comes to mind here, if the feds suspect fraud or abuse or waste with the Washington Bridge, does anyone believe if that occurred that it's limited to one bridge in the state of Rhode Island? Uh, what are the implications for many other projects that are planned for repair or replacement throughout the state? So again, I want to shout out to the members of this channel. I have one tier membership and members really help support the channel. I'm committed to posting at least one new video every week. Thanks to the, you who have liked, subscribed and left comments and also check out my free digital download of the largest civil engineering disasters from the past 100 years. The link's in the description. Thanks very much, everyone.